Hello and welcome to Stories from India, a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I'm your host Narad Muni and I'm a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I'm a traveling musician and a storyteller. So the way I'm doing my job is by podcast. This week we are finally beginning on the Mahabharat. Kind of. We won't get to the main story, but we'll cover what happened at the very very beginning. There are some ties to the Ramayana as well. We learned today that if you ever get engaged to someone, you shouldn't just forget about them. Also, if you lose a ring in a river, it might show up sooner or later on the dinner table. The king walked up to the girl whom he had never met and said, "Hello, have you seen a deer with an arrow in it? And will you marry me?" But let's skip back a little or maybe a lot. Shakuntala was the daughter of Vishwamitra and Menaka. We have encountered Vishwamitra before during the Ramayana episode 15 Rishi versus Rishi on civil war and episode 16 16 flags. Those episodes are not essential for you to enjoy this one. Vishwamitra whose name literally translates to the friend of the world nevertheless has powers that can destroy the whole world when he's angry sort of like the incredible hulk menaka shakuntala's mom was an apsara apsaras were basically the indian mythology version of a cross between a fairy and a beauty contest winner like fairies they had some limited amount of magic and like beauty contest winners they could be counted on to sell lots of self care products to millions of followers vishwamitra who had started off as a king went through a few rounds of praying to the gods before he acquired all his powers meanwhile indra the king of the devs felt threatened and decided to do something about it He sent down Menaka to distract Vishwamitra from his prayers. And it worked. But it worked a little too well. Menaka and Vishwamitra had a baby girl together. And right after they gave her up for adoption. It was a tricky situation. Vishwamitra was on a revenge mission. against someone who had denied him a magic cow he couldn't babysit and menaka had to return to heaven it was her home and that home had a terrible immigration policy so she had to leave her newborn baby daughter behind so they left the baby near rishi kanwa's hut and quickly exited the scene stage left When the rishi came back home he was shocked to discover a baby girl at his doorstep but she was okay there were some birds who were taking care of her kanwa named the girl shakuntala which literally means protected by birds he brought her up as if she were his own daughter when she grew up she took after her mom She had the charisma of an apsara not that of a big mean green angry monster Shakuntala lived in a hut with her adoptive father while he was out for days at a time praying and stuff she managed her home and garden and she was in the garden one day when she met king dushyant Dushyant had been hunting as kings often do to escape the pressures of palace life. 
He had shot an arrow which had definitely hit a deer, but not killed it. So the deer had wandered off, and the king was tracking it. He stumbled into Shakuntala's garden. It was love at first sight for both of them. And that's how he came to ask the very awkward question at the beginning of the story. Shakuntala replied, No, of course she wouldn't help him find a wounded deer. Didn't they have better things to do, like planning their wedding? Dushyan spent a few days with Shakuntala, but then he had to go back to his kingdom. He couldn't neglect it forever. Besides, he liked having cooks, maids, and miscellaneous household staff wait on him. At the hut, it was a brutal world, where he had even had to tie his own shoelaces. Can you imagine the pain? Dushyant did give her an engagement ring of sorts. Being a king, he had several on his fingers, and one of them would do just as well. He invited Shakuntala to go along. But Shakuntala couldn't go. Her dad had to be informed. It's not like he had a cell phone she could call him up on. So she would stay back. But she promised to come to him at the palace the moment her father returned. Neither of them thought of simply sending him an email or maybe just leaving a letter for him. Dushyant hurried away back to his palace while Shakuntala attempted to get back to her routine. She didn't manage very well though because her thoughts were constantly filled with eager anticipation of having a grand wedding and becoming the queen. That's why when the Rishi Durvas arrived at her doorstep, she did not notice him. And that angered Durvas. If there is one Rishi whom you do not want to displease, that's Durvas. Vishwamitra is quick to get angry as well. But even in his darkest moments, isn't petty. Durvas, on the other hand, goes out of his way to make life difficult for others. We'll see more of this in future episodes. So anyway, Durvas arrived at Shakuntala's doorstep looking for a handout, a good dinner, and a place to sleep that night. Durvas almost tripped on the stairs. That put him in a foul mood. And when no one answered the doorbell a few times, he just got angrier. But he couldn't very well fault the owners for not being home. He turned away and started to move on to the next house. And then he saw Shakuntala. She was in the garden, daydreaming about life with Dushyant. Shakuntala saw Durvas and rushed to him, but it was too late. That her thoughts were on Dushyant? was not enough of an excuse. Durvas cursed her on the spot. This person she was thinking of, this Dushyant or whoever, would forget her completely. And at that very moment, far away in his palace, Dushyant experienced a sudden jolt. He looked down again at the phone he was holding and wondered, Why was he browsing for wedding decoration ideas on Pinterest? It's almost as if a wedding had been planned. Which was completely silly. No one he knew was going to get married. And wait a minute. It seemed like he was missing a ring on his finger. Oh well. It must have fallen off on his hunting trip. The recent hunting trip that lasted a whole week and during which time, absolutely nothing happened. Shakuntala meanwhile pleaded with Durvas to please not be so harsh on her. 
Her whole life was at stake. Durvas was petty, but he couldn't stand to see Shakuntala crying. Especially after she had rolled out the red carpet for him, breaking out the best wine and cooking exquisite meals and even allowing him to use the presidential suite in the hermitage. He finally relented. All right, all right, enough with the tears, he said. Dushyant will get his memory back if he sees an object that connects the two of you. This delighted Shakuntala. She immediately looked at the ring on her finger that Dushyant had given her. She thanked Durvas, who then went on his way. Not long after, Shakuntala's dad returned. She filled him in on everything that had happened. And the two immediately set off for Dushyant's palace. On the way, they stopped to drink some water in a nearby river. While grabbing some water, the king's ring slipped off Shakuntala's finger. Within an instant, it was out of sight. Nothing she could do to get it back. She cried out in despair. But nothing could be done now. She resolved to keep her cool. Maybe the king would remember her without the ring as well. Durvas hadn't specified what qualified as a means to bring back Dushyant's lost memories. Would seeing her do the trick? What had she got to lose anyway? Turns out, she had plenty to lose. Face, for one thing. Dushyant received them warmly enough, but only as if they were any of his other subjects. Not as a wife and father-in-law. When they began their story, it was clear to him that Shakuntala and her dad were just scammers. Hadn't the police department just issued a cautionary note about potential tricksters in the area just the other day? These must be the ones. He had the crying lady and her screaming father kicked out. Shakuntala was devastated. She had no hopes of ever getting back with Dushyant. She went back to her life in the hut. But things never went back to normal. A few months later, she gave birth to a baby boy. She named him Bharat. Many years later, let's cut back to Dushyant. Or rather, to Dushyant's dinner table. His chef had cooked his favorite fish. But just as he began to dig in, something fell onto his plate with a clink. It looked like a ring. Yes, it was a ring. And it was his ring. The one he had been missing. Amazing. It must have been in the fish. But he didn't recall losing it in a river. He took a closer look at the ring and then had a sudden jolt as his memories of Shakuntala came flooding back. He immediately panicked. His Shakuntala, what had happened to her after all these years? He rushed back to what he remembered of her home. As he got closer, he came across a curious scene. There was a little boy, about seven or eight years old, who seemed to be some kind of circus trainer or something. He was literally putting his hand in the lion's mouth. He rushed to the boy's assistance, but the boy simply shooed him away. Stop or you'll make me lose count, said the boy. He had been counting the lion's teeth. It wasn't a tame lion, but the boy had no problems keeping it under control. 
Amazed at this boy's courage, Dushyant asked who he was. I am Prince Bharat, son of Shakuntala and Dushyant. That answer immediately filled the king with pride and emotion at the same time. Father and son went home together. There was a tearful reunion, with Shakuntala and Dushyant and Bharat all hugging each other. Shakuntala did get the grand celebration she had been hoping for all those years ago. And Bharat would go on to rule the country. That's all for now. A few notes on the show. We haven't met Menaka before, but we have met another Apsara, Anjana, in episode 25, Up, Up and Away, as Hanuman's mom. Vishwamitra is one of the direct links between the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. The story of how the Mahabharata was written is itself an interesting tale, but I'll reserve that for a future episode. Most of the Mahabharata characters are descendants of Bharat. Bharat is an alternative name for India, and that comes from Prince Bharat's name. This Bharat should not be confused with Ram's brother from the Ramayana, who is a completely different person. That's all for this week. If you have comments or suggestions, please leave a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at sfipodcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. Thanks to all you listeners for your continued support. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Later this week, in the Character of the Week mini-episode, we'll meet an avatar of Vishnu. He's short in stature when he wants to be. And all he wants is just the bit of land that he can cover in three steps. I'll see you later.